Hello and welcome back. If you want to take your racing to the next level, you need to get the most out of your training. And this doesn't mean training harder or training longer, it means recovering better. And this video is going to tell you exactly how to do that. Before I get started, please make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you want to learn more about recovery, check out the links I've left in the description below, which will take you to some articles I've written on recovery methods and how to recover a little bit better. Recovery is simply the body's process of reversing whatever damage or fatigue that is caused during training. And if we look at the type of fatigue that we've induced during training, it can actually help us to develop a more effective, efficient recovery strategy. Training in itself doesn't provide a huge amount of benefit. In fact, it only just makes us fatigued. It's actually in a recovery that we start to make progress as our body gets stronger. Now, if we recover on a regular basis over time, we're going to build a huge amount of fitness. But if we fail to recover, we're actually going to lose performance, go backwards, and eventually we'll start running the risk of burnout. After a hard training session, you're simply going to need to get rest and fuel if you're gonna get back to any real level of performance. And this is where 90% of your recovery is gonna come from. And the basics aren't always the most interesting and they often go overlooked, but that's where the best use of your time is gonna be. It's getting the basics right. So if 90% of your recovery comes from sleep and nutrition, put a lot of time into them. And when you have time left over, once they're done, once they're taken care of, you can start looking for the three and four percenters that are gonna come from things like compression garments and other techniques. But you've gotta put the basics first and then you can start going looking for all the fancy extras that may or may not work. In all the research I've done, sleep, nutrition, they always work. But any of the other tools, it kind of depends on the person, depends on the scenario, and so they're not always that reliable. Some of them definitely work and they're definitely worth trying, definitely worth putting into your routine, but just don't get distracted. Don't be fooled into thinking that there's a magic bullet out there. The basics always win, so you must put the basics first. So our fundamentals are two things which our body just simply can't function without, and that's rest and nutrition. In this case, sleep and the food that we eat. Sleep is quite simply miraculous when it comes to recovery. When we sleep, our body has a huge cascade of anabolic hormones which are essential for the repair and growth of damaged cells. And also during sleep, it allows us to uh, resensitize to certain stress hormones that we have during training. So during really hard training sessions, we have these stress hormones which allow us to perform. But if we don't sleep, we never really put our bodies into a full state of rest, which means that we lose a bit of sensitivity to these hormones and they have less effect. And over time, if we're not getting enough sleep, we actually run the risk of burning out because these hormones start to have much less of an impact and they become a lot less beneficial to us during our training. Nutrition is our second fundamental and our body is just a machine that burns energy. So when we train really hard, we're going through a huge amount of energy and we have to top back up that tank for the next session. No amount of stretching or foam rolling is gonna get the energy into your body that you're going to need for the next session. And without energy, you're simply not going to perform. Simple carbohydrate is what we burn mostly during high intensity sessions. So this is uh, really essential when it comes to refueling that you have a big quantity, of simple, easy to digest carbohydrates, and the more nutrient dense they are, the better. Protein is also then essential for the growth and repair of cells as it acts as the building blocks for these cells. And as an athlete, you will have a higher requirement for protein because you're putting the body under a lot more stress and damage. And if you don't recover from these, you're never going to develop that sort of uh, injury resistance and extra strength and power that you need to perform. Then in order to maintain proper bodily function, we're also going to need a lot of vitamins and minerals because during hard, long sessions, we're going to deplete a huge amount of those minerals, which are essential for some of our most basic bodily processes. And most of these vitamins and minerals are going to come from things like fruits and vegetables. So you need to have a varied diet with as much color as possible to try and get as many of these macronutrients in as you can. If you have a balanced diet and you're eating enough, then you're probably not going to struggle to take on enough fat. And fat isn't the enemy. Fat is very, very important for the maintenance of our cells, but it also has a huge amount of fat soluble vitamins, which are also very important for uh, a lot of our body's functions. So fat is something that should not be avoided for the athlete either. Hydration could easily be included in nutrition, but it's really something that should be treated on its own. You should be thinking about hydration most of the time before, during, and after your session. Yes, you need to rehydrate, but you should be trying to hydrate during as well. So I don't really think of hydration as a recovery method. It's more something that you should be doing as an ongoing process to make sure that you maintain adequate, healthy function. So that leaves us with the rest. And there's so much that we can discuss from compression garments to yoga, stretching, foam rolling, uh, even neuromuscular stimulators. There's a huge amount of techniques and things out there. 
and it's kind of hard to single any of them out in particular. When we start looking at all the tools and tech that's available for recovery now, a lot of them are really well founded in science, but very few of them have a 100% guaranteed benefit. And this doesn't necessarily mean that they're useless. In fact, if you feel fresh and they make you feel better, that is gonna give you confidence going into your next session. And that's a very powerful thing. That perception of feeling ready to train is something that is extremely beneficial. So while some methods may not work as well for you as they do for others, they still might yield some benefits. So it's definitely worth trying things to see if they work. Mobility work is also very important. Stretching, foam rolling and yoga are things that a lot of people have built into their recovery routines and they're excellent for maintaining movement quality, ranges of motion and preventing injury. Just keep in mind though, they won't refuel you for your next session and they won't necessarily reverse fatigue. So the timing of what you do can be really critical in getting you prepared for your next session to make sure that you perform. If you have a particular method for maintaining mobility that you like to use, please leave them in the comments below because I would be quite interested to hear what people find useful and what you might use as a part of your recovery or daily routine. If you have any questions on recovery, please make sure to leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them as best I can. And if you like this video and found this topic useful, make sure to like the video because then I'll know this type of video is the sort of thing you want to see more of. Make sure to subscribe so they don't miss out on things and until next time, thanks for joining.